I just collapsed in my husband's arms. My heart was pounding and I sobbed. To go from this healthy, playful young boy to a leukemia diagnosis was, it was devastating. The colonoscopy was positive for a tumor that was in my sigmoid colon. I was completely in a state of shock. It didn't make sense. I'd never heard of multiple myeloma. I expected it. Cancer has been in my family. I go in for my first exam. They take a urine sample and some other stuff. He comes back in the room and he says, you have prostate cancer. This had been building in me. No one bothered to check. I had just recently purchased my first home with my soon-to-be husband. Life was really just sort of starting out for me. That's when I got the news of my diagnosis. We thought we had beaten it, and then at one of my CT scans and my CA-125 tests came back and it was elevated to the point where we try the next drug, and it never stopped from there. I, I think I would get maybe three to six months at, at a point where I wouldn't be in treatment. My cancer had been very persistent, although not aggressive. And after two or three scans, we'll have a recurrence. So right after Caden was diagnosed, everything moved incredibly fast. That same day, he was in surgery, getting his port into his chest, and he started chemo that day. In February, we found out that Caden relapsed. The progress in cancer research, particularly in the last two decades, has literally been breathtaking. When I started in the field, we treated cancers with what people might call a sledgehammer approach to an era now where we have drugs that very precisely target the abnormality that's present in a patient's tumor cell. And it's really introduced what people would now call the era of precision oncology. Immunotherapy is definitely a part of the revolution in precision medicine. After relapse, we actually did immunotherapy because he has pH positive leukemia, which is high risk. If we stopped there, his chances of relapse would be much higher. Based on the research that they've done, the only way to really increase the likelihood of um, not relapsing is to do CAR-T. This was the first time through all of the years of him dealing with this that he got into complete remission. This is the first treatment in eight and a half years that I've had that's been new for ovarian specifically and couldn't have come at a better time. We're hoping for great response in the future with these meds and maybe this will be the one that will prevent the recurrence. All of these advances are coming together to really advance the therapies and to make them increasingly precise and decreasingly toxic so we can really improve the quality of life of patients. The BCG treatments weren't working for me because the tumors were continuing to come back. My doctor at MD Anderson thought that I would be a good candidate for this gene therapy trial that they were doing. I was given the opportunity to get into a phase one trial of teclistimab, which is a new class of drugs for multiple myeloma. We discovered that it had actually spread to my lungs and eventually was enrolled into a clinical trial that was going on at the NIH with a drug called atezolizumab. It's been remarkable in the ways that, first of all, the cancer has stopped growing. We haven't seen any growth in over a year. There are little to no side effects whatsoever. Well, you wouldn't even know that she was fighting cancer at this point. It takes a lot of people to make these advancements in medication. And I think we all have to do our part. My whole thing is if I can help but one person and knowing that I'm a part of something, a part of a fight, a very small part of a fight makes a difference. I think it's really important for Congress to understand that I'm here today because a groundbreaking clinical trial changed the trajectory of my disease. I think there's virtually no question but that we are going to need advances in basic science in areas we can't predict will be important to actually fuel the next generation of advances. All cancer patients want one thing, and that is time. And that's what these 
new drugs and all the research that goes behind these new drugs is affording us. We are in a time of unparalleled opportunities in cancer research because of the technological explosions and advances that, that have been made. And not increasing that investment will result in a loss of the momentum that's, that's actually been created. Funding for cancer research is vital so that we can continue to make advancements in treatment options. We can continue to make options with less side effects so that he doesn't have to deal with the consequences of saving his life for the rest of his life. Without trials such as these and without the funds to make this medicine happen, she wouldn't be able to have the, the family and friends she has. She gets to live a normal life. She gets to smile more. Without funding, without these treatments, it just ends.